hopefully you have a really good handle on Newton's first law of motion because now we're going to tackle his second law of motion. So his second law of motion is also called the law of acceleration and it states this, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and inversely proportional to its mass. Oh boy, got a lot of big words in there again. So let's break it down and let's figure out exactly what that means. Okay, so acceleration of an object. So remember that acceleration means that somehow we're going to be changing that object's motion. We're going to make it speed up. We're going to make it slow down. We're going to make it change direction. So one of those three things is going to happen in order to change its motion. Okay, so acceleration of an object. That part's pretty easy. We've been dealing with acceleration for quite a while. Is directly proportional to the net force acting on it. Okay, well, we, we know what a net force is. We know that forces act on objects, but what does this directly proportional mean? Well, here's what I want you to think about. If you have um, a ball, like a big heavy bowling ball, and it's sitting on the floor, and if you give that bowling ball just a little push, the bowling ball is going to roll a little short distance. If you give the bowling ball a great big push, it's going to roll a much further distance. Okay. And so not only is it going to go farther, but it's also going to go faster. So if I give the ball a little push, it's going to roll at a pretty slow speed. If I give it a really hard push, it's going to roll really hard. Uh, here's another example. If you've um, got one of those cool chairs with wheels on the bottom of it, and you've got your uh, younger sister sitting on the chair and you give her a shove across the floor. If you shove her just a little bit, she doesn't go super fast and she's not very excited about it. But if you shove her really hard, she goes really fast and she starts giggling and she really loves it. Okay, so just as a point of practice, I mean, something that you are already very familiar with, you already know that the harder you push on something, the faster it's going to go, right? Okay, well, that's what this means. Directly proportional just means if I take the force and I make it bigger, then that means that the acceleration, A, is also going to get bigger, okay? So if the force goes up, the acceleration is going to go up. Conversely, if the force goes down, if I use less force, then the acceleration is going to go down. So that's what directly proportional means. Okay, now what about um, this last part of the statement? The acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to its mass. Well, what's mass? Well, mass is how how much of the object is there. How heavy is it? How much does it weigh? Um, how much stuff is present in that object, okay? So let's pretend that I've got a great big huge bowling ball and then I've got a little bitty ping pong ball sitting next to it. Um, I shove the bowling ball with a pretty good hard shove. I shove the ping pong ball with the same magnitude of shove. Which one goes further? Well, obviously the ping pong ball does because the bowling ball's heavy, doesn't go as far, okay? So, again, something that you're very familiar with, you know this intuitively, if the mass of something is bigger and you shove on it, so if the mass is big, it's a lot harder to get that object to move very fast, okay? Um, let's put, the, put, put a couple of people in the chair and think about that. So let's say that your little three-year-old sister is sitting in the, in the chair with wheels and you give her a big hard shove, she goes flying all the way across the room, okay? Now, let's say that you've got um, maybe your grandpa and he's sitting in the chair and you give him the same magnitude of shove, he's not gonna go flying near as far as your three-year-old sister is, okay? You gave him both the same amount of push but because your grandpa's mass is way bigger than that of your three-year-old sister, he doesn't go nearly as far. So mass, if, as the mass increases, the acceleration is going to go down, assuming that your force is going to stay the same. Okay. So to express this mathematically, what that means is that my force is going to be equal to my mass times my acceleration. And so this may not be intuitive to you exactly. So let's say 
that, um, let's put some numbers in here so that you can see it. So let's say that I have six equals two times three, okay? If I make this number go up, what has to happen to this number in order for this one to stay the same? So if the two, if I make it go up to a three, then, and I still want it to be six, then what has to happen to this one? Well, this one has to go down to a two so that this stays the same over here. And so that tells you, since the mass and the acceleration are next to each other, if one number goes up, the other one has to go down. And so there's our inversely proportional piece of that, okay? So then what happens if I make um, this number go up, and let's say that this number goes up to 12, and if this number is still a two, well, what has to happen to this one? Well, this number has to go up also. It has to go up to a six. And so these two, if this one goes up, this one has to go up. And so that's what happens with your force and your acceleration here. If I make the force bigger, then the acceleration is going to have to be bigger. And that's where this piece um, of this equation comes in. Okay. So basically the idea behind this is force equals mass times acceleration. Now let's figure out where those units come from. We are going to always express mass when we're calculating force. We're going to express it in units of kilograms. And we're always going to express acceleration in meters per second squared. Now there are other units for mass. I could use milligrams. I could use grams. I, and over here I could use miles per hour. I could use lots of different things. But when we calculate force um, in the metric system, we need to use kilograms. And we need to use meters per second squared. And so when I have a kilogram meter per second squared, then that's multiplied together. That unit is the same thing as a Newton, which is abbreviated with an N. And that's what I was using um, a day or so ago when I said the force was five Newtons or the force was seven Newtons. Okay, so that's approximately how much a, a Newton is. Okay, a kilogram meter per second squared. That's about um, if you would would lift an apple up off the table. So a Newton is not an absolutely huge um, amount, um, but that's the units that we're going to use for that. I do wanna go through a sample calculation for you. And I, the one I'm gonna do is the, the one that's in your book. It's on page uh, 279. So let's just look at example 12-3 really quickly. Um, it says, imagine every car enthusiast's dream, a flashy sports car and a long stretch of highway. Stomping on the gas pedal causes the engine to accelerate the car at 12 meters per second squared to the west. If the car's mass is 1,500 kilograms, what net force must be generated to achieve this acceleration? Okay, so if we're asking for net force, um, in order to find that, I need to know mass and I need to know acceleration. So the force, it tells me that the mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. And it tells me that the acceleration that it wants is 12 meters per second squared. 12 meters per second squared. And so when I multiply that together, you're just gonna, um, remember when two letters are next to each other, it just means multiplication. So I'm gonna take 1,500 times 12 and when I do that, um, that's going to give me an answer of 18,000 newtons. So it's kilogram meter per second squared, but that's the same thing as a newton. So it's 18,000 newtons. And since it specifically tells me um, that we are going to accelerate to the west, that means that the force must also act to the west. Okay? Alrighty, so you are going to be doing some practicing with these kinds of problems. Um, if they give you a mass and an acceleration, all you have to do is multiply those two numbers together uh, to get a final force. When you're doing these problems, make sure that every time you write a number down that you write the units after it. Don't just write 1,512, write 1,500 kilograms, write 12 meters per second squared. Keep those units on there. Uh, it's a good habit to get into for some of the future math and science classes that you're going to be taking later on. So when you get down to the bottom, don't forget to put the units on the number and don't forget to put the direction on your force because that's going to um, be crucial here in a couple of days as well. Okay.